Now we're going to look at the existential instantiation process. So that means we'd have something like this. E of x, p of x, and we replace this with p of a, where a would be something from the domain that satisfied this particular relationship. All right. Now there's many times that we would need to use the existential instantiation process with the universal instantiation process. But order matters. So let's look at an example and I'm going to work it out first and then I'm going to explain why I did things in the order I have. So here's the universal quantifier. Now x is a dummy variable, y is a dummy variable. This a here was a constant that comes from the domain, right? So what does this look like here? If we didn't have the quantifiers, this should look like something I'd use with modus ponens, right? A implies b and a allows me to derive b. So that's really what we're getting at here. Our two hypotheses, the order we write those doesn't matter because we're just rewriting the information that we have to begin with. Right, so hypothesis, hypothesis. So I want to strip the universal quantifier and also strip the existential quantifier, but I'm going to do this first, okay? And the reason why, we'll see more details in a moment, but since I'm using these two together, that's the reason why this one has to go first. So I'm going to have A of, say, T, since, so I won't confuse A and A when I'm saying it, right? So this is 2, an existential instantiation. And now I'm going to have A of T implies B of T. So now I did 1 in universal instantiation. And now A of T implies B of T, and A of T allows me to conclude B of T. So this is three, four modus ponens. Okay? So let's look at an example and see why I did this in order. So if I were to swap lines three and four, it would be incorrect. So let's say we have this. Let's say our domain is the numbers five, six, and seven. And we have P of X means that X is positive and E of X means that X is even. Okay, so a positive integer and even integer. So it's true, right, given this domain that for all X X is positive. But that's not true here, right? Here we have, it does exist, or there exists, an X such that X is even. In particular, 6 here. So let's say we did this as our proof. So uh, we don't really have a statement to start with, but let's say that we were given this fact, we're given this fact, and somewhere we need to combine the two. So maybe, maybe eventually we need to get to the point where we have something like this. Um, you know, P of X and E of X. Something like that. So, you know, for all X, P of X, that's a hypothesis to the resistant X. Or we could use Y here. That's also a hypothesis. And let's say we do this. We say, okay, P 
of A. So we did one universal instantiation and four, then I do E of A. That's two existential instantiation. So what's wrong there? Well, remember we said that P was true for everything here. So A might've been five. And since I'm using A in both places, now I'm trying to write E of five. And so five is even. Well, five is not even. So now this is a false statement because I don't know which P I've used here. When I was doing this here by doing T first, I chose a T from the domain that satisfied A, okay, because there exists a Y such that A of Y is true. And now when I do universal instantiation, I'm still using that same number. And since we said for every X, A of X implies B of X, it doesn't matter that which T I chose from the domain. If they're from the same domains, if, if the X's and the Y's are from the same domain, it doesn't matter because this is always true, right? Because the universal. But this is not always true, necessarily, or this right here. Okay? So I don't know which A I chose for P when I'm writing this. I'm just saying pick one that satisfies this, which is any of the three numbers. But in this particular case, if it happened to be five, this would be false. Okay? Now you might say, well, okay, I got a fix for that. I'll just throw B in here. I'll say P of A and E of B. Is that fine? That would be fine in isolation. And there's cases where that might be okay because now B could be the six, A could be a five, or it could be six or seven. That wouldn't matter. But if I have to eventually get down to this, doing something with this, this assumes these two are the same because this, the scope of this applies across the whole thing which means I can't write P of A and E of B. Those aren't necessarily the same, or this says they have to be the same. I mean, they might be the same, but I can't count on the, well, maybe I got lucky and it was the same idea. All right? So that's the reason why the order here matters and why the order in this case is incorrect. So you just have to think about that.